In this video series, I'm talking about the Apple TV 4K. I've got the latest 2022 model here and some of the settings, options, capabilities, and ways of using it that I take advantage of in my home theater spaces. In this video, we're gonna talk about the remote and specifically some of the click pad, touch pad type of operations, what options are available and why I have it set up the way I do. So Apple gives us a few different settings to control the operation of the click pad and the touch pad. It's all in settings. So if you go to settings, remotes and devices, we have a section up here on the top for remote, which is specifically the Apple TV included remote. Under the first option, click pad, we can choose to have the remote operate with click and touch or click only. Now I usually opt for click and touch because there's a couple specific capabilities that make this remote very powerful still with the touch enabled. But I will say that it can get a little kludgy sometimes to click in the ring versus sometimes having your thumb also hit the touchpad surface. And that can be a little bit frustrating, a little bit annoying. Um, so some folks, I can definitely see how you may opt to only use the click because inadvertent swipes taking you off of what you were trying to select uh, can really be a pain. So you have to be a little bit more deliberate when you're using the outer ring and you're clicking not to touch too much into the inner ring and actually touch the touch surface in addition to your click. Now the second option that might help with this is touch surface tracking. There's three options here, fast, medium, slow, and depending on which one of these you select will control how much response the Apple TV actually takes to your swipes. I stick to the middle balance and I just have a preference for medium. Another option that I always change as well from the default set, uh, uh, default state of my Apple TV when I get a new one is the TV button. That's the button here. We have a menu back button. They used to call this menu. Now it's, it's really being more of a back function. And then this is the TV button, also called a home button. But we can have that button take us either to the home screen or to the Apple TV app. I always have that button go to the home screen. I'm not a really big fan so far of the Apple TV app. I don't think it fully kind of fulfills its intent as being the main interface or the one-stop shop for your entire use of an Apple TV. I actually also prefer to use the iTunes Movies and TV Shows app over the Apple TV app itself. I really only use the Apple TV app for Apple TV Plus content. And otherwise, I would rather navigate the home screen, go into individual apps. So for me, that's a really, really key setting to use the box how I would prefer and how I like to use the box. One other thing to note, last, last uh, setting in that section there, is the specific device information about your remote. You can see its serial number, you can see its firmware version, you can check its battery. This remote lasts forever. I don't, I don't even know how often I charge this thing, maybe once a month or so, if that. Do keep in mind that remotes today, and particularly this one as well, are not just like dumb IR blasters. This is basically a mini computer. It runs its own software, and so there are updates for the remote that will come out. In order to get those updates, it's basically usually when you plug it into power to charge it, is when this might check and see, oh, is there an update available and maybe one should be applied. And in the early days here of the, of the 2022 model Apple TV 4K, a lot of folks have been having trouble with this remote. I have as well, it basically stops working. It might need a reset. So we've been waiting for fixes to come. In the meantime, I do have another video on the channel that talks about both how to reset the remote and how to unpair it and repair it with your Apple TV. I think a lot of folks have found that video useful to get around the, the unresponsive uh, state that this remote can get into lately. So just to, to cover quick, kind of like why I like the touch feature, um, it does let us get places or certain places around the interface in the UI a little better, being able to swipe. You know, it's not always the most precise to always land where you want which is a reason why I use the grid keyboard. I talked about that in a prior video. But to me, one of the most useful things when it comes to keeping the swipe capability enabled, the touch capability enabled, has to do with scrubbing in video. So I just jumped into a movie here. This is just Black Adam uh, in the Apple iTunes Movies app. But you can see here when I pause and I pull up the menu, being able to swipe here can go much, much, much faster than clicking or using kind of the, the click to fast forward or click to rewind. Now you may not do this a lot in your, in your average kind of everyday movie watching. 
However, particularly for making videos and stuff on the channel or doing demos, as I do often for my spaces and my home theater, being able to jump to certain points in a movie very fast, I find is a very useful feature to me. And being able to swipe directly where I want to go, I don't think there's a substitute in speed and efficiency for using the touch in that case. That's really one of the main reasons why I leave the touch feature of the remote turned on. And that touch feature now is one of the only like remaining unique capabilities that the Apple TV re remote itself has over more advanced control options in remotes like the Control 4 Halo that I have here. So there you go, some thoughts, uh, recommendations, and preferences on how I use and configure the Siri remote for the Apple TV 4K. Let me know how you feel about this remote control. I know the last remote, the last generation remote, the black one with the real touchpad, that one was very polarizing. I don't think that one was really great. I actually recommended the Apple TV to a few family members in that generation, and they've really struggled and in some cases gave up entirely uh, on using the Apple TV because of the former black remote. I think though this one was a solid improvement. We've had basically now the same remote for two models of the Apple TV. I think it's working. I think it's really awesome. But let me know what you think. Do you like it? Do you use it? Do you choose not to use it? What do you use instead when it comes to controlling and operating your Apple TV? Thanks so much for watching. Look down in the description for some ways to support the channel. Check out some of the other videos in this series. I'm blowing out all kinds of my preferences, settings, and capabilities, and so on with regards to Apple TV. And otherwise, please do all of that regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, share the video, leave some comments. Thanks for watching, and come on back for more home theater discussion and fun.